Hi, this is Larry Hedrick with Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today we're going to hear a story about the biggest feud that ever took place in the mountains from Clay Worse. Uh, Maria Jones, oh dear. Well, I, I'm bad on dates, but back in the 1960s, there was a time we were averaging a homicide every 90 days in the Superstition Mountains. Everybody was packing heavy iron and watching their back trail and oh it was it was it was fascinating it really was i was just a young kid back there then and uh, we didn't feel at all at risk as a result of these things we just thought it was was fascinating but at any rate celeste maria jones i understand was an opera singer who set up a camp in East Boulder Canyon, right at the base of Weaver's Needle. And she came up with the most incredible stories. She maintained that Weaver's Needle was hollow and that at the top was a sacrificial Aztec altar where beautiful maidens were thrown into this vast chasm bedecked with diamonds and rubies and emeralds and there was a circular staircase going around and around inside Weaver's Needle with niches in the walls with golden idols. Oh, the most incredible thing you ever heard in your life. And whether Ed Piper, he also camped near Julia in East Boulder, whether he actually believed that or not, I seriously doubt. The story was so bizarre that it was absolutely unbelievable, but both of them settled on Weaver's Needle and claimed it. Celeste Jones actually had her people construct a rope ladder ascending Weaver's Needle. Now, I questioned that. I'd heard of that rope ladder, never seen it. I questioned whether it ever existed because that's 500 and some feet from the base of the plug up to the top. That's an awful lot of rope ladder. I questioned it until a fella showed up here with one of the rungs, a two by four with two holes bored in it. It's down in the museum, I think, down there now. There actually was a rope ladder up Weaver's Needle. And the first, it was in several stages. And the first stage, it was, it was free, freely suspended and when you climbed on the darn thing, it tended to turn with the, the twist of the ropes. And uh, I can't say the name of the fella. I believe he was uh, uh, on the staff of the high school here in Apache Junction that said he'd actually attempted to climb the thing and chickened out. He was afraid that he would get up there and not be able to continue and fall to his death. But he actually brought me a rung and some rope out of that ladder. It was there. But at any rate, the stories are kind of mixed, but the story that made the rounds among the camps and the superstitions was that a fella came into Al Morrow's camp and accused Al Morrow of sending invisible men flying invisible glass airplanes, strafing his camp with invisible glass bullets. And Al Morrow just told him politely, please get lost. So he left, but he came back later carrying a gun. And Morrow addressed him somehow, I don't know how, and he made a big mistake. He said, I'll do my talking with this and reached for his gun. He never should have said that because that tipped Morrow off to what was going to happen. And Morrow drew and blew him out of his, blew him, right, blew him away before he could even pull his gun. I can't say his name. There were several killings within about a 90-day period there. Mostly they were between two rival Dutch hunting camps 
each believing that the other one had found something of precious great value that they were not going to have and they got to killing each other and when all the smoke cleared nobody had anything. It was, uh, it was one case where two Hawaiians came in there and camped over in La Barge. They weren't fighting over the needle. They camped in La Barge. One was Fernandez and one was, I can't remember the name of the other one. At any rate, one of the Hawaiians showed up on the outside, said the other one had gone back to Hawaii, but evidently had a few drinks and confessed to a lady friend that he'd killed the other one. So this is not a good part of the story to tell, but Chuck Ayler, a friend of mine, was camped in La Barge. We had a big Sibley tent set up back there. And Chuck was coming down La Barge one day and found the Hawaiians camp abandoned with all the equipment, the food and everything else still there. Came by that camp a couple times, nobody ever showed up, so he figured it was abandoned. Here's a good place to move in and settle down. So he did and was camped there for a few days and some hikers came through and uh, Chuck said you know is there anything dead around here I I smell something dead and one of the hikers said yeah there's a dead rattlesnake down just down the trail here a little bit and Chuck said would well, you, you throw it away somewhere he said I can smell the darn thing so the hikers came by a day or two later and Chuck said did you throw that snake away and they said yeah and Chuck said, I can still smell it. Throw it farther, will you? So Chuck was sitting there a day or two later, and Amos Hawkins, the range deputy, came through with a Hawaiian. And he said, uh, okay, where did you bury him? And he said, right there where Chuck Ayler is sleeping. <laughs> Chuck was sleeping right on top of where the one Hawaiian had buried the other one. <laughs> Not a good story to tell. But at any rate, the Hawaiian was, of all the killings and the superstitions down through the years, that Hawaiian was the only one, to my knowledge, that was ever prosecuted. But he claimed that the other Hawaiian, his partner, was intimidating him, drawing his, drawing his gun on him and saying, hey, I can shoot you any time I want. And he became, became convinced that the, the man was going to shoot him. So he thought the only way out was to shoot him first. And he apparently did serve a little time for it, not much. I don't know what verdict they came up with, whether it was negligent homicide or what, but he served a little time and then went back to Hawaii. But during the 60s, it was was an interesting time in the, the history of Superstition Mountain. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 